They don't know how you feel. Window unit, you don't get my feelings. And you ugly. Watch out! Wow. Mr. Cool understands your feelings and how to make you feel perfectly comfortable. Go to MrCoolDIY.com. We love the That was hilarious. Window unit, you're ugly. Oh, that's some funny stuff. All right, we gotta go head out. Uh, it's Sunday morning. We're gonna go look at a walk-in cooler. All right, here's the box. It's hot. Woo, it's hot in here. Look at this. See this is down here. Someone's been tinkering. Let's see. So I got this all over here like this. I got it turned off. Going to, uh, I'll grab the H10. Oh, look at that condenser fan motor. Old as old as the hills too. Look at that. I'm gonna grab the H10 and we'll do some sniffing up here. Cause you know you always go back to the H10. I do have a UV light. Whoever put this dye in here. We could try it out on the evaporator coil downstairs. We'll start up here and then we'll work our way down to the bottom. It says it's 404A. All right, so I still have the pro I still have the PM model, and I have the uh, I have an old G too that plugs in that still works just fine. It's over 22 years old. Here's how I like to run mine. I'll run it on manual just to get it warmed up. I'll turn the knob down. I usually do all my leak checks on medium when I get going. So H the H10s you gotta let them warm up. There's a heater inside here. And this heater, I need two hands to open up my hold on a second. I'm gonna open it up for you guys. This is your sensor and it has a heater in it. You'll see it heating up in there. See it's starting to glow. That's why you're letting this thing warm up. That heater is going to get hot, and this is what wears out, and this is replaceable, your sensor. Um, there's the other adjustment up top here, too. I've already got mine adjusted. If you go through the instructions, it'll tell you how to adjust that sensor. And then <clears throat> you're going to have this to fine-tune it. And that's your sensitivity right inside here. It's your heater adjustment. Excuse me. The calibration reference, like most of us, who knows where it's at? I need to order up. But we'll get that started and then we'll come over here and leak check this system. That's just the basics on these H10s if you guys never used one before. I know a lot of people have asked. On the old plug in models on the H10G, this is a bigger dial and it's on the bottom, it's underneath, it's on the bottom of it. Most of the time when you get them set in, you don't have to tinker with them too much until time goes on and your sensor starts wearing out, then you'll have to readjust. And at some point you do have to change those sensors. And they're not cheap, but it's all part of the deal. But like I said, my, my H10G in my van, let's see, take a look here, there's the Vangina. The, my H10 in there, G, it's 22 years old, it still works. You have to plug it in and there is a plug right there too, so. I could have brought that in the extension cord up, but that's, we're used to doing it. I hope someday Bacharach with, with today's battery technology and everything, you would think this could be put into a handheld, even if it was wider in your hand, you know? Someday I'm sure it'll happen. I think they have a, if their sales department's listening or their engineers, 
you get this down into a handheld model with a wand and stuff and you probably hit a home run to the moon we already know it's the best leak detector you can buy so we've been heating up let me adjust it when you adjust it you, you need to give it a little time to adjust so i'll let it sit like that and then it'll speed up and slow down and get weird and it just i'll just let it sit like that for a bit Now I always start my leak checks on medium and manual. You know, as the heater's heating up and stuff, it'll, it's going to find its medium. Here's another thing too. The logic on some of those handheld leak detectors is if it gets a hit, it's going to scream. Rah! So everyone's going, oh, it's sensitive. This, it's, this is how the leak detector works. These, if you get a small leak, you're going to get a small uptick. Just because it gets a, a hit, if it gets a big hit, you get a big screen. You get a small hit, you're going to get a small increase in the ticks. You have to learn how to use these, or you're going to go, oh, it's no, it's no good, da 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 da. But no, it's just different. It's just different the way the logic is on these. And we'll get to do some sniffing. You see if it starts to speed up or not. Speeds up and slows down. Start at the usual suspects. Looking a little trippy over here, huh? Bellows on that pressure control. Let's take a sniff. Smells okay. It smells okay. Did you hear me? All right, let's take it downstairs to the evaporator coil. That's gonna be my next spot. So as I'm gonna move this downstairs, I'm gonna turn this guy off. And then we'll, re we'll restart when we're downstairs. If you ever had a system and you don't know what refrigerant is, you can check your expansion valve to find out what it's made for. But like on this one, look how torqued that is. This thing needs some serious, it needs a condensing unit and a coil. So I got the H10 warming up out there. Let's go, uh, let's give her a sniff. Wow, look at the burners. Let's give her the old sniffer rooski. Okay. Same settings, we're on medium, I get the light green, and I get a tick about this fast. Some people like a slower tick, but I'll go, I'll go with the tick about that fast on the H10. I'll start sniffing. Look at that, already getting hits.
around the valve and stuff. Distributors will be. Definitely on this return end. So, so you see the less definitely. So you see here. I'll chat at you guys for a minute. Hold on. So like I was talking about on the roof, on an H10, it's, it doesn't have logic where it sees refrigerant and just goes, Rah! it sees a little bit of refrigerant and then it starts to uptick. Now if it's a big leak, it's going to scream at you. A lot of those handheld leak detectors are just going to scream right at you, any, any detection. See, there you go, that's getting bigger. I was able to get it. So where's all that return bin is the leak. Now what's cool is that thing had that UV dye in there. Let's turn the light off and I do have, I have my, uh, yeah, I have a UV light. Hey, that's not a screwdriver in my pocket. I do have a light. Um, we can give it a try. Let's see here. Someone had put some dye in there. And see, I don't even know if it's if it's getting uh, yellow from the dye or not. I can turn the light off on my phone too here. Let's try this. See, the H10 even outdoes the UV dye. I really don't see anything yellow or glowing. Do you guys? We know that return bin's a weeper. That even beats out the UV dye. So if someone had put the dye in there, I'm just not seeing it. I mean, only at the back of the coil too. But I'm just not seeing anything yellow, but I know the H10. We'll get the H10 up in there. And it's this return bed right here. Yeah, there it goes. I still don't see any UV dye, so the H10 winner again. You know, industry standard forever. And like the song says, back to the H10. Try those other detectors, they always let me down. Feel like I wasted my money. Making me wanna frown. Ipecon, yellow jacket, I've tried the rest. They always let me down. You know what I get? Back to the H10, never lets me down. Oh, back to the H10. Back to the H10, never lets me down. Man, it's a pretty, it's a pretty good sized little leaker there. Uh, you saw the H10 worked, but the UV dye did not on this one. Let me soap up the rest of these return bins. That's the only one I was getting hit on. If I don't try and blow some solder on there, you know they're not going to take my bin right away. So you don't want to just do a gas and go. You can try and seal it up a little bit, which is what we're going to do. But I'm going to go ahead and soap up the rest of these return bins try and make a little patch, patch kit. I really wasn't getting any other hits off the other ones and I might be able to patch them up just for a little, a little snipper. Y'all know this is the best leak detector. Now, 
This isn't a permanent fix. This is going to be a band-aid until they can buy a new coil. All right, so that leaks um, on the low side. We're not going to have to recover what's left in there. We could pump the unit down. So I'll just go ahead and I'm going to close off the, the liquid line service valve, or some people call them the king valve. This is your liquid line service valve right here off the receiver. I'm going to go ahead and close that down, turn the unit on, and then I'll bypass that suction pressure switch over there with my screwdriver when we get to the end, and we'll pump the unit down so we can make that repair. So we'll pump all the gas back, and then coming out from here, going back around, down to the unit, coming back up to here, we can make our repair. All the, all the refrigerant will be in the uh, condenser and the receiver. What's left? And the static pressure is like at 133. I want to see where the cutout is anyways on that pressure switch. It's a good time to see where your cutout's at. See her pumping down? Not bad. Five ain't bad. A little prep for surgery. You see my videos before I got this Milwaukee. I call it the Milwaukee Dremel tool. I don't know if it's a rotary tool. I don't know the correct terminology for it, but I call it the Milwaukee Dremel. I use it, I get the cutoff wheels for it, all kinds of stuff. I use it for all kinds of jobs. But we're gonna try and clean this up here. Get it sanded up a little bit and then flow little bird turds on it. You just have to be real careful. That copper's really corroded right there. So let's see if I can shine it up just a little bit. We don't want to take any material off, we just want to shine it up a little bit. Seal it up. Let's take a look. Looks like we got it holding for now. No bubbles. I got this thing charged up and I noticed how low my suction pressure was. My evap temperature. And then, remember on that unit on the side door it says walk-in freezer? So I ran the, the model number of the compressor through the Copeland app and this is the low temp compressor. And the evaporator coil did have a heater in it. So that box used to be a freezer. Now they're running it as a refrigerator. And this is why you have to take a step back and look at the whole system. You know, uh, this is a low temp system. They're using it as a refrigerator. It's not going to matter now. The box is going to pull down and cool off just fine. But if you didn't look this up and know it, you'd look at your suction pressure and think you got a bad expansion valve. That noise you're hearing also is a condenser fan motor. But it doesn't matter. I'm going to quote changing out this condensing unit and the coil to the right gear. So what I got to do is measure that box, the length, the height, and the width, and get some equipment that's sized for that box for medium temp. 
Also, this is the leak that the H10 found that the UV dye did it. Someone put dye in there. That's not my handwriting. I wish they would have wrote down what refrigerant was in there because then the next poor soul will know. So I wrote that on the dryer and the compressor. It's 404A. Um, and that's where we're at with this one. Like, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.